Welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness. Our home is supposed to be our castle, a place where we feel safe and secure. But some people just can't relax in their own home because ghosts have taken over, some more evil than others. Those are the stories we'll be dealing with here tonight. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you like tonight's video, give it a thumbs up, share the link, and comment below. The great gods of YouTube have been calling me constantly asking me for these things. Please help me to appease them so we can keep meeting like this every week. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together. Together, 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 together. This story is about my grandparents' house and the evil that haunted them. My parents divorced when I was four and my brother was still a baby. My mother, brother, and I moved in with my grandparents and we didn't see dad for a while. He did call a lot, though. My grandparents had been living in their house for about 20 years at that point. When they first bought the property, there was an old dilapidated house standing on it, so they tore it down and built a new one. My grandparents had a pretty tough time after moving into that house. They lost their oldest son, Terry, in a car accident. And not many years after that, another son, Scott, died in a very strange house fire. A lock that would never stay closed before suddenly became stuck, preventing him from escaping. He didn't die right away, though. It took him three days before he finally succumbed to his injuries. This all happened long before I was born, but my grandma talked about it all the time. The loss of her sons left a very obvious scar on her heart. She became very paranoid about the house, convinced if my brother and I went in the backyard alone, we would drown in the pool. The first time I ever saw a ghost was in that house. I was sitting at the dining room table with my mother and grandmother, and I looked out the window at the porch. I clearly saw somebody walking along the porch, headed for the door, but no one ever knocked. It was daylight, so I got a really good look at the guy. He had dark brown hair, tall, tan, and wore a dark colored jacket. I looked over at the adults for validation, and I found that my grandmother was intently staring out the window. She looked me in the eye, acknowledging that, yes, she too had seen it. That was your Uncle Scott, coming to visit on his lunch break, Grandma said with a sad smile. At four years old, I wondered for a long time why he didn't just come inside. It took me a while to fully understand and come to terms with the fact that Scott was dead. But then, when I finally figured it out, I would sit there every day, waiting for him. Between noon and 1 p.m. every day, he'd waltz past the window, across the front porch, and I'd open the door trying to catch just a glimpse of him. But I never got to see him in full. Thinking about it now, I imagine it was just some sort of remnant of his image. Maybe Grandma's memory was the only thing that kept him walking past that window every day. It brought her some measure of comfort to see him, even if it was only a glimpse. I remember always feeling uncomfortable in that house and not being able to sleep at night, terrified of the dark. Even as an adult, when I think back about trying to sleep in that house, it nauseates me. I would scream bloody murder every time they tried to get me to go to sleep in the bedroom that I shared with my mother. It was a very haunted room. Sometimes they'd relent and I'd sleep with my grandmother but I'd still hear my grandfather talking to someone in the hallway at night. I kept hearing him tell whoever it was to leave him alone and go away. He would be mumbling something that sounded like a prayer, or he'd curse at whatever it was that was taunting him. I remember being so very frightened every time I would hear it. I tried to wake up my grandmother, but she was a sound sleeper. Eventually, I would go out and check on my grandfather on my own, only to find him asleep in the chair with a Bible in his lap. My grandfather was over six feet tall, part Native American Navajo. He was obsessed with the paranormal, Bigfoot, and aliens. My grandmother was 10 years older than him and only four foot 11 with a wicked sense of humor. They always made me laugh, 
and their love was a beautiful thing, and they taught me a lot about life. They had been through so much, so for something to scare them, well, that was a big deal. Even though I felt very loved in their home, I did not feel safe there. My mother had a lot of issues, depression, bipolar disorder, and a very bad drinking problem. She had a tendency for disappearing for days at a time and was often in and out of hospitals for her mental health because she refused to take her medication. It was tough on my grandparents, but they helped me out as much as they could. I would just sit and talk to them for hours. Sometimes they'd tell me about their own paranormal experiences, especially my grandfather. Mom would get angry at them for scaring me, but their stories always made me feel less alone and made us closer, so I'm grateful to them for that. A lot of my early ghostly experiences are just fragments of memory. I remember calling my dad late at night, begging him to come get me because I was scared. Or riding my bike past the house and seeing a horned demon looking out the window at me. My toys moved around all on their own, and I'd find them broken, essentially mutilated. I'd also find dead animals around the house, and my grandparents' dog would viciously bark and growl at nothing. And there were many shadows and voices throughout the house. One day, my mom and grandma got back from shopping at Walmart, and mom walked into our shared bedroom with all her bags. She placed them on the floor in front of her and was fussing at me for something that I'd done. I remember being very stressed out over the exchange, and suddenly, all of the bags started moving on their own, and stuff started falling out all over the place as if someone were aggressively digging through them and throwing things around. This went on for about 10 seconds before my mom yelled, Stop it! And then it was done. That was when I realized that ghosts could touch things in the real world. And if that was the case, then they could touch you. And maybe even hurt you. I stopped looking for Uncle Scott after that, and I became even more afraid of the dark. I hated sleeping in my mom's room, and I was never given any more than a nightlife to stave off the pitch blackness. Luckily for me, around that same time, my Uncle Terry, another one, born after the first Terry died and named after him, moved back to my grandparents' home with his boyfriend, James. They took over the basement and decorated it very nicely. There was a wet bar with sodas in it for me. They took the room at the back of the basement, halfway down the hall. If you walked the rest of the way down, there was a small bathroom with a shower, and through that bathroom was a large storage room filled floor to ceiling with stuff that my grandparents had collected through the years. My mother, brother, and I ended up moving down to the basement to a side area that they sectioned off with room dividers. We all three shared a bed facing the wet bar. One night I woke up out of a sound sleep, freezing cold. In the darkness, I could see someone behind the bar. They were clearly moving things around, but I could hear no sound. I watched in silence for a while, trying to discern who it was. At first I thought it was my uncle's boyfriend because they were about the same height. I tried shaking mom awake, but to no avail. So I sat up in bed, trying to lean in closer to see. And the moment I did, the figure stopped moving and slowly turned towards me. I could make out two little white specks that were its eyes. I was frozen in place as we stared at each other, and I remember thinking it was going to kill me. After a few seconds, it uttered in a deep, gravelly, inhuman voice, Go to sleep. Well, despite that order, I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. I hid under my blanket and shook in fear until it was morning and my mom went upstairs. And after that... I refused to sleep down there. Mom said I was being impossible. But shortly after this, we began seeing my dad more, and he eventually gained full custody of my brother and me. The story doesn't stop here, though, because my brother had his own experiences to tell. He's three years younger than me, so obviously he didn't retain as much as me, but a couple of things did stick out to him. First, he was seeing grotesque zombie faces in the mirror in that bathroom in the basement. 
I later found out from my mother that she and her brother Scott had seen the exact same faces when they were playing Ouija board as teens. The other thing he remembers ironically happened in the pool, the place that my grandmother was so afraid of. My brother insists that I try to drown him in the pool. He said that we were playing in the pool and our mom ran inside for something and I pushed him under the water and stood on his neck. He says it was one of the most traumatic events of his childhood and he's had nightmares about it for years. But I have absolutely no memory of this happening. The only one who does is my brother. I'll admit I didn't believe him for a long time, but he's stuck to that same story for many years, so I'm convinced that it actually happened, but I can't understand it at all. I have a lot of trouble wrapping my mind around that one, to be honest. The final thing about this house is one that I don't even like mentioning, but I will. When my grandparents got older and couldn't live there anymore, they moved out and my Uncle Bill, his second wife, and his son David moved into the house. Everything was fine for a while, but David always knew that the house was haunted. He really wanted to move back in with his biological mother because he hated being there. His bedroom was in the basement. One day, David went missing. It would be nearly three days before my uncle found him in the basement shower stall, dead. He had somehow, among all the floor-to-ceiling junk, managed to find my grandfather's old shotgun in the storage room. Most of the family didn't even know there was a gun in there, and those who did insisted that it was so old it wouldn't even fire. But somehow David found it, and he did the unthinkable. My uncle still lives in that house to this day, and he's become a very bitter and cruel man. That beautiful on the outside yet deeply disturbing on the inside house, although terrifying and traumatizing, opened my mind up to so much. The years I spent there with my grandparents made me who I am today. I do have memories of them that I hold very close to my heart. My grandparents have both been gone for over a decade now, and I've grown up to be very much like my grandfather, haunted by things that I've experienced, but I still hunger for the truth, like him. Also like him, I'm in tune to nature and things that linger just outside the reach of the human senses. For that reason, I felt that sharing these memories with you would be really important, even if in the end, the only one that's helped is me. My dad has a very small house. It was built in the 1920s and has two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a living room kitchen, all in just 595 square feet. My brother and I shared a room that was so small that to conserve space, we used bunk beds. I was on the top. That bedroom always scared me, and I had a huge fear of the dark as a kid, and I kind of still do. Back then, we had a dollhouse in the room, it was about five feet tall and stood against the opposite wall from the beds. One night, I had a sense of dread, so I was hiding under the covers. But when the air got too hot, I had to peek my head out to breathe. And when I did, I looked through the bars of the bunk bed and I saw a young boy about my age standing next to the dollhouse. And it wasn't my brother who was fast asleep on the bunk below me. I dove back under those covers with my heart pounding. But after a few minutes of repeating to myself, he's not there, it's just your imagination, I had to check to make sure that I hadn't seen what I thought I saw. But when I finally got the nerve to poke my head back out, the boy was staring at me from just inches away with his face pressed up against the bars of the bunk bed. I can't remember if I screamed or just hid again but I do know that I called out for my brother, pounding the wall with my hand until he woke up. But he never saw the little boy that night, and I never saw him again after that. There are other stories involving that room right up until the time I moved out last year. Things moved around on their own. Christmas lights would sway in a non-existent breeze, and a woman was standing at the foot of my bed, staring at me. My father saw a child crawling out of our bedroom, wearing only underwear. 
He yelled to go get dressed, thinking it was one of us. But when he checked, my brother and I were both in our room, fully dressed. And these are just some of the stories that happened there. I'm a 27-year-old female, and I live with my girlfriend. We recently moved to a very nice house in the countryside in Ireland. It's an old wooden house, and we thought it would be a very nice place to live. The first weeks were fine, but sometimes we'd hear footsteps on the stairs. A few months passed, and I started to hear scratching under the bed in the middle of the night. I checked, but there was nothing there. One night as I was sleeping, I heard my girlfriend talking to someone downstairs. I listened closely to try to hear the conversation. She was asking someone what they were doing up so late. I was confused, so I went downstairs to see. I saw my girlfriend talking to someone who looked identical to me. I asked her who she was talking to, and she spun around and had a terrified expression on her face. I, I, I thought it was you. She turned back around to see that the other me had completely disappeared. We didn't sleep that night, and we're moving out next week. I live on the 36th floor of a very modern high-rise apartment in Beijing, China with my girlfriend. In June of 2020, I was in the shower washing my hair. My hair and face were covered in shampoo bubbles, so my eyes were closed. But I heard a female voice say something to me in Mandarin, which roughly translates to, Okay, that's enough. Stop it now. Thinking that my girlfriend had come into the bathroom without my noticing, I wiped the soap from my eyes, expecting to see her standing there. But, to my utter surprise, I didn't see my girlfriend, but a strange older Chinese woman that I'd never seen before. She was staring straight at me, almost as if she were looking through me. She made no sound at all and didn't move. I only saw her for a second before the shampoo dripped into my eyes again. I wiped my eyes, but a second later, she was gone and there was no sign that she had ever been there in the first place. I called out to my girlfriend asking if anyone else was in the flat, and she said there wasn't. I was a little worried about this, and I tried to find a rational explanation. I remembered that my grandmother back in England had a brain tumor, and that caused her to have hallucinations. She was seeing people around the house that weren't there. As a result, I went to the hospital and got a CAT scan but it showed no abnormality in my brain. I haven't seen the woman again, but the fact that there's a ghost appearing inside my home while I'm in the shower has me a little freaked out. I don't know what's going on, but I do know that I want it to stop. Believe it or not, while the video was playing, the great gods of YouTube called me three times. They're just as relentless as these ghosts. But let's forget about them for now. I'd like to thank you all for listening tonight. Whether you've been with me from the start or tonight is your very first time, you're all a part of my family of darkness, and I love spending time with you, and I hope the feeling is mutual. So, until next time... Stay scared, my friends.